Hi, welcome to chapter 2 of tutorial 2 for collections managers on SARS. In this chapter we're going to look at condition assessments and valuations. Condition assessments are done when a, an object requires some intervention uh, or you'd like to simply state the general condition of an object uh, and it's used to set out flags or workflows for conservators working in your institution. For instance, a spear might have rusted and you've assessed it to state that it's in a poor condition and requiring treatment and a conservator would come along at a different st stage, at your appointment, and treat the uh, spear for rust and then you can also track the action that has been ta has taken place. The condition assessments are related to the objects in a one-to-many relationship. So like the object tracker, it will con uh, c uh, provide a, an audit history of the condition assessments carried out on that particular item. So to carry out a new condition assessment, there are th the links just above the tabs and just below the main object code. Uh, we'll look at valuations in a minute. So click on the link for condition assessments and this takes us to the condition assessment form. You can start off with a comment. You'll see it's automatically linked to the object we just came from. So we might say something like, um, you know, assessment of the entire spear collection you know, whatever it is uh, this might be you assessing the objects in, in the beginning might be a specialist uh, conservator depends on your your situation so the next field is the state so let's say it's you know fair state uh, we might say requires a cleaning and I'm going to say this was done by me and then the assessment date is usually today's date the audience again is, is the museum and I can actually set this to private if this particular condition assessment needs to be hidden from the public normally we just leave this as group default or public save And that's pretty much all there is to our condition assessment. Later on, the conservator might arrive and c carry out an action. So they might actually clean the object. Um, and then this would follow on. So just create another condition assessment and uh, state what actually was done. So here I've actually created a, um, a node for what should happen um, when it actually takes place, create another condition assessment that object. So click on the link to return to your object and you'll see our condition assessments block has now got our first node ID. To carry out evaluation of an object, and this is for people interested in GRAP uh, in South Africa, then we can click on the valuations link. You aren't necessarily going to value all your heritage items in your collection. Some have no value is in, in that they can't be traded on the open market but there are certain items that uh, need to be valued like paintings or jewelry in your collection. For those items it's an optional thing so you don't need to value each and every item but uh, go to the valuations link you'll be taken to this form you can pick the assessor again so perhaps I'll pick myself this time again um, and then the date and I might give this item a value of 10 Rand again a comment and test museum and private so this is always set to private for valuations this is not a content type that we allow members of the public to see at all for obvious reasons hit save with both condition assessments and object movements you can export the movements to Excel. You can also do the same for your valuations report and we'll look at that in the in the next chapter. To return back to our object, click on the link 
and here we are. So now we have a valuation, we have a condition assessment, an object tracker and some images. So this is a more complete image. To wrap up this chapter, just to discuss some of the other tabs over here, edit is to go back to editing the object, um, cases and permits, if this object has been involved in a nomination or an export case with SARA in terms of section 32 of the legislation then you might see permits and cases um, underneath these two tabs. The movements, if we click on that, it will link us to the list of items in the object tracker just in a more user-friendly format in a table. And then children is just the sub-objects that have been specified under the parent code. Um, so in other words, if if I created another object and specified this object as its parent, I would see a list of objects underneath here. Uh, when you're viewing the sub-objects, on the right-hand side it will show you a block for the parent code to which that object um, uh, belongs. Alright, that's the end of this chapter. We'll move on to chapter 3 for some of the reports.